Hey everyone! Recently I saw online some of these scattering object simulations and I thought they are really cool and I wanted to recreate them. First I used Blender but this didn't work out at all. So I jumped into Houdini and created this. As you can see this is fully functioning. You can also adjust the scattering objects right here. So you can just switch to let's say four cuts and play the simulation and you can see we have four separate objects. So if you want to know how to scatter any objects, and I mean any objects, in Houdini and later export them as an Alembic file and maybe render them in Blender like this, stick around and follow my instructions. So first of all we create a new geometry object right here. This should be in the object tab and then double click on the geometry to go inside this. In here we will create a box. This is just a simple cube like you do in Blender. This box we need to duplicate. So hold Alt and left click to duplicate this object. It's similar as in Blender and other 3D softwares. We just add a Voronoi fracture object and place it down here. In here we need two inputs. One time the geometry that we want to fracture. So we take the left box and put this inside here and the points for the Voronoi cells. And how do we get these points? Points we get with a scatter object. This one right here. If we click on the blue color on the right side, we can only see how the scatter object look like. And you can see points get scattered on the sides of the cube. These points we want to use in the Voronoi fracture, so we plug the scatter into the Voronoi fracture. Now let's look at the Voronoi fracture object, so we click on it and also click this blue check mark here, so we see what's going on. And you can see we already have a scattered cube in here. Similar as in Blender, if we want to add physics to an object, we will add a rigid body type, and if we press play, the cube falls down. But we'll do the same in Houdini. So we'll just edit RBD, bullet solver. This is kind of like the rigid body in Blender and drop it in here. And there we have many inputs, but we only need two of them. One is the geometry that we want to apply the physics to. So we take the Voronoi fractures. So all those little scattered objects will have the physics applied to them. And the fourth input is a collision geometry. And we want to collide it on the floor. So we will drag this out, press tab and search for a grid. This is simply like a plane in Blender and we will move this plane down a bit, just like that. To make the plane also visible, control and left click this one so we can visualize two objects. Now to simulate these, we have to select the bullet solver, also click on the display render, go back to frame one to see what's going on. And now if you press play, you can see it will simulate the collision. After the simulation, it will look super sped up. Um, this is just simply because Houdini tries to showcase it as fast as possible. To see it in real time, we just have to toggle this real time toggle down here. And now if we play the simulation, we can see what's going on. Right now the scatter looks a bit weird because we have some super long objects and some quite weird thing going on in the middle. To avoid that, we have to change the scattering type. And to do that, we have to select our box object and change the primitive type from polymesh to primitive. Now you can see the scattered objects or the scattered points are inside the cube. If I switch back to polygon mesh, it's only on the outside of the, of the faces. But if I switch it to primitive, it's inside the cube. Now if we select the bullet solver again and look at it, we can simulate everything again and you can see the scattered objects are way cleaner and look, look much nicer. And this is all it is. If you want to do the same thing with another object, like this test object in Houdini, you can just duplicate the test object as we did with the cube, connect it to a scatter object. So we scatter some points, plug it into the Voronoi fracture. So it cuts some pieces out, add a RBD bullet solver and a grid as a collision. And if we now press play to simulate it, we can see it will break this object. In the scattered object, we can always change the total amount. So we can switch this maybe to, let's say 500 pieces and also press simulate again. And you can see the pieces are way smaller and it should be exactly 500. 
So back in our cube scene, maybe we want to add a texture, like I did before, a cobblestone texture. Before we can do that, we have to do some UV unwrapping. So we press tab and type in UV and search for the UV texture node and plug it in between. In the UV texture node, if we visualize it, we have only the top part like textured kinda. In the texture type, I just changed it to face and now all the sides should be textured normally. To add a material in Houdini, we will tap into the object mode and press the object again to switch to the material tab. In here, we will add a principal shader node. This is like a principal BSDF node in Blender. In this shader node, I will type in cobblestone texture to name it. And under textures, I will activate use texture and search for the cobblestone PNG I downloaded earlier. Now you can simply drag and drop the texture onto the cube and we can see the texture is on our cube. It's a little dark because the surface has a dark base color. To switch it up, I will change all the numbers to one. So it's a clean white and the texture shows correctly. We can switch back to our object mode and go into our geometry with the box. And we can see if we press play now, the whole object is textured and also the insides. This is quite cool because the Voronoi fracture will output an inside texture and an outside texture that we can also change later in Blender. I will show you how to do that. So after you are happy with your simulation and you like how many pieces get scattered, in my case it's a thousand points or a thousand pieces, I want to output this file to use it and render it in Blender. Therefore I will use the RBD bullet solver output on the left side, which is the geometry, and search for a ROP alembic output file. With this we can output the alembic file. Alembic files are great for simulated things such as something that breaks or even water simulations. In the alembic file we will click this button over here and search where we want to save our thing. In here I will call this 1000 pieces tutorial and always add a dot abc because otherwise it won't save it as an alembic file and then press accept. In the frame range, we have to change it from render current frame to render frame range. And if you can't change the number over here, you have to change it down here in the timeline. So if I press 100 down here, it will also change the start and end frame at the top. After you're happy with your settings, you can just press save to disk and it will output your simulation. In Blender, you can go to edit preferences and in extensions, you can search for the drag and drop support. After that, you can simply drag and drop your ABC file you have created, open as a drag and drop, import with default settings, and it is in here. If you press play, you can see the whole simulation works. All right, if we select our geometry and go into the materials tab, we can see we have the inside and outside material. And if we switch the colors, let's say the outside to blue and the inside to red and play the simulation, you can see the outside of the stones are blue and the insides are red. So you can customize the textures as much as you like. If you also want a cobblestone texture here, you can go into the shader tab, select the outside material and click use notes. So we have a principal BSDF loaded in here. After that, I will also use the cobblestone texture and plug it into the base color and voila, we already are here. Now let's say we want the inside as a gold color. So I just search for a gold material for now. Let's use this one for demonstration purposes. And now the inside should be gold and the outside is the cobblestone. And let's play the timeline. And as you can see, the inside is rendered as gold and the outside as the cobblestone. Yeah, this is it. This is how you can transfer your Houdini breaking simulation into Blender or into any other 3D software that allows Alembic files, which is like everyone. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial today. If you want to see more Houdini stuff, just write it in the comments. Let me know what you want to see and I will see you the next time. Peace out.